Hello everyone and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through how to approach application questions. So this is actually an exam technique video rather than biology specific. So if you are new here click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So first of all what we mean by application questions and it's typically applying your knowledge and it falls under what we call AO2 or in other words assessment objective number two and these assessment objectives are the same across all the exam boards for AS and A-level biology so although I specialise in AQA this is relevant for any exam board and what AO2 or assessment objective two means is the ability to apply your knowledge and your understanding of scientific ideas procedures techniques and process now just to show you this bit is specific for aqa but it's going to be similar for all the exam boards and we've got here the percentage of questions which will be ao2 on paper one two and three and therefore the overall weighting approximately for your entire a level so you can see that almost half of your a level will be application questions and this is one of the reasons why students are really really requesting one of these application videos now if you do want to jump straight to the modeled example i've got the time codes at the bottom so you can just click and just jump straight to that but what i'm going to go through before we look at an example is a technique to use to try and make sure you are much more confident and you're gaining more marks so the first thing is how you actually prepare for these before an exam and because the whole point is you're applying your knowledge you have to have really really secure subject knowledge first of all and that is of all the topics so all the theory but also all the practical techniques because if you have a look they said AO2 is applying your knowledge of not just the scientific ideas but techniques and procedures as well so the way to go about that is making sure you are really, really going through this active recall consolidation, or in other words, revision after the lessons and in the lead up to the exams. And I'll link my video up here for my top seven active recall techniques based on neuroscience. So that's one thing you do have to have really good subject knowledge. The second thing is you have to have practiced these questions repeatedly and when you practice them note down the common key phrases or key words for each topic that you notice coming up and then repeat those same questions at a later date so it's all about having really really strong knowledge and practice so that's how to prepare for them but when you're actually doing the exam question I do have four top tips on how to try and make sure you do get full marks so the first thing is when you're reading the question, application questions typically have a bit of information at the start where it's a completely unknown bit of theory. And what you have to do is identify the topic or it could be the experiment, the practical, that this unknown bit of information links to. So that's number one, identify which topic it links to. Step number two is, for the topic you've identified, you need to recall the keywords and phrases which you know are really important for that topic and get you um, marks. So for that, what you can do then is when you are revising for each topic, just note down all the keywords. And in all my videos, I do emphasize the keywords if you do need help with that particular aspect of this. Now number three is where you're starting to do the application. So you need to have a look at the question and start to think how could you apply those key words to fit this question and that links to number four as well. You need to be able to identify which information from the question to include in your answer as well because it's not just going to be you stating facts and key words linked to the topic that you remember. You have to be able to link it to unknown information that is given to you in the question. So I'll go through an example so this makes a bit more sense. So here is my application question and we're told that gout is a disease caused by the build-up of uric acid crystals and joints 
Uric acid is produced from xanthine in a reaction catalyzed by the enzyme xanthine oxidase. And then we're given the chemical reaction. We're then told that there is a drug here that is used to treat gout, and we've got the diagram showing the structures of the xanthine and the allopurinol drug. And the question, this was three marks, was use this information to suggest how allopurinol can be used to treat gout. So as soon as you see suggest how, you know it's an application question. because so you have to use your knowledge, use the information to suggest an answer. So as I said, the first thing you should do is identify the topic this unknown information links to. Then the key words that are linked to that, then how you'd use those in the questions, and then which bit of information from the question you're gonna use. So if we have a look, first of all, identifying the topic, this is an enzymes question. So we've got there in the information it's to do with enzymes. So that is the first thing, we've identified that. Then we have to go through, what are our key words and phrases that are linked to enzymes? So the key words and phrases for that are unique shaped active site. The active site is complementary to the substrate shape. Enzyme substrate complexes, now that one is key, there's always a mark for correctly using that phrase in an enzyme question. And then also tertiary structure protein. So these are some of the key phrases that I've picked out that I think might come up in the answer. So the last bit is looking at what is the relevant information from this question that we might have to use, and then we'll look at how we'll use that information and the keywords to formulate an answer. So I've highlighted what I think is the key information. So the word equation and the fact that the diagram shows the structures of those two chemicals. So now we use all of that to come up with an answer. So we need to use that information that I've highlighted, use these keywords to suggest how allopurinol can be used to treat gout. So my answer here, what I'm going for is, first of all, Xanthin and allopurinol have similar shaped structures. That's how I've used the information. You can see they both have rings within their structures. Next then, what is the relevance of this? So the fact they have similar structures means that the allopurinol will also be complementary to the active site shape, and therefore it's able to bind to the active site. Now this actually links to another topic, which I've slotted in, that is a description of a competitive inhibitor. So I'm putting that in as well, another key phrase. Now, if we have a competitive inhibitor bound to the active site, that then means we cannot form enzyme substrate complexes. So that's how I'm using that phrase. And if we don't have enzyme substrate complexes, the reaction cannot occur, or now we link it to the word equation, uric acid cannot be produced, and that is how it's treating gout. So that's just one example to show you the stages that I would use. And it's all about your subject knowledge using those key words. So comparing this to the mark scheme, you can see I have included more information than is actually needed, but I would always do that to cover all bases. And the marks were pointing out it's a similar shape to xanthine, pointing out that it can bind to the active site or it's a competitive inhibitor. And then we can see this mark here, there's fewer enzyme substrate complexes. To have a go at lots and lots of application style questions, head to mrestrick.com, click the A-level tab and go to skill-based questions and you'll come to this page. And on this page, you can download for free my application and maths questions booklets. And that has got lots and lots of application questions with the mark schemes so you can have a go yourself. So that is it. I hope you have found this helpful today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.